साथ विद इन वर्ड लिमिट सो वी विल डिस्कस ईच ईच वन ऑफ दीज थिंग्स राइट एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस वी विल डिस्कस मैनी अदर थिंग्स वट इज द ओवरऑल स्ट्रक्चर ओवरऑल कवरेज ऑफ दिस वर्कशॉप वी विल स्टार्ट विद हाउ टू राइट इंट्रोडक्शन देन वी विल डिस्कस बॉडी डायमेंशंस हाउ टू थिंक अबाउट द बॉडी पार्ट एज मैनी ऑफ यू आर शेयरिंग अबाउट द कंटेंट पार्ट हाउ टू ऑर्गेनाइज द कंटेंट हाउ टू मैनेज द कंटेंट पार्ट राइट देन हाउ टू राइट कंक्लूजन देर आर क्वेश्चन वर्ड्स क्वेश्चन स्टेटमेंट्स लाइक एनालाइज डिस्कस सो हाउ टू चेंज द आंसर एज पर द क्वेश्चन वर्ड्स right apart from this we will discuss how to do the value addition then some diagrams making some new diagrams okay so out of this i think we should be able to complete 1 2 3 and some part of the fourth today and this part we will deal tomorrow there is a chance that this workshop might extend to day 3 because as we go in depth it takes time because i don't take any shortcut i discuss everything with proper example so there is a chance that this workshop might extend to day 3 so you can plan for that okay how many of you are appearing for 2022 because for 22 this time is very crucial how many of you are appearing uh, only you and online mein how many people okay there are many people for 22 very good very good there are some more questions how to make short crisp notes for answer writing okay how to make uh, diagrams how to make good presentation okay i got it i will request online students please come on video that will help you better absorb this workshop okay please join with the video that that will help you better fine so let's start with the first and the basic thing very important thing introduction writing introduction writing okay so introduction writing is the first and the most important part or introduction writing may it's not about introduction writing it's about starting your answer opening that path which goes to complete the answer sabse badi problem aati hai sir introduction writing mein kyunki ye samajh mein nahi aata ki answer kahan se start kare do you have this problem sir start kahan se kare ye samajh mein nahi aata sabse badi to problem ye hoti hai and because of this reason you are not able to start answer writing or you don't do it regularly because somewhere you stuck in the starting only okay so in the introduction there are three components first what to write number 2 how to brainstorm and number 3 how much should be the length of the introduction these are the three major questions <coughs> which can come about the introduction writing okay so how what to write what exactly should we write current affairs should we write basic concept yeah there are at least 7 to 8 different type of ideas which you can use and that we will discuss with example right 
so it will depend upon the question demand and we will discuss nine different ideas on how to write the introduction then how to brainstorm and basically how to brainstorm may i will say when to brainstorm about the introduction writing should we start brainstorming about the answer from the introduction only or something else my question is jaise hi hum question dekhte hain as soon as we see the question should we start thinking about what should be the introduction or should we do something else before that okay okay any anyone else any other idea okay <clears throat> so let me tell you here i'll give a different view here basically body intro and conclusion three components we have right normally how do we proceed first we will we'll think about introduction then we will think about body and third we will think about conclusion and maybe value addition kya diagram banana hai all of that my invitation is first think about the body part this is how do we do usually this is my recommendation first think about the body what exactly are you going to write in the body part now what are the benefits why i am saying so any idea yeah that is one thing that after the introduction you are not stuck you are not held up that is one thing I didn't get your point exactly. For example, I am saying that if you are writing the intro, mm -hmm. after writing the intro, you are going to thinking about the body. Uh -huh. And the body that you are going to write, it is going to be some different type. So the quality is going to be different. Okay, that might be. Okay, I got your idea. That can happen. You are right. Topic connectivity and the topic wise writing and observe demand of the question. Okay. fine so basically one thing which i want to highlight which is the primary reason why you should do that because body is the core right if you think about the body first then you start getting many ideas about the introduction writing because introduction is although very peripheral aspect very it's important it's peripheral but we have lack of content in the introduction writing we have only very few ideas suppose agriculture ke bare mein likhenge sab log same hi type ke introduction likh rahe hote hain this much is the contribution we are dependent upon agriculture we should move from agriculture to industry 99% answers are like that only we have lot of students who join our courses and us sab ke answers common hi hote hain how to differentiate you have to get the different ideas from others and that can happen when you are डीप डाइविंग इन टू द बॉडी पार्ट क्योंकि आप जैसे ही बॉडी पार्ट में जाते हैं यू स्टार्ट गेटिंग लॉट ऑफ न्यू आइडियाज लॉट ऑफ न्यू पॉइंट विच यू कैन राइट इन द बॉडी बट यू कैन राइट मे बी एज एन इंट्रोडक्शन एंड सिमिलरली यू कैट मैनी पॉइंट विच यू कैन राइट इन द कंक्लूजन सो माइ इन्विटेशन इज फर्स्ट थिंक अबाउट द बॉडी पार्ट थिंक अबाउट द बॉडी पार्ट बिकॉज दैट इज वे दैट इज वॉट इज एग्जैक्टली बींग आस इन द एग्जामिनेशन सबसे मेजर चीज तो वही है आर यू गेटिंग Suppose you start thinking about inclusive growth. Now you start getting multiple ideas. Inclusive growth के advantages क्या हैं? क्या-क्या issues आ रहे हैं? What are the government schemes? अभी उसमें से आपको कोई ऐसा एक idea मिलेगा, आप उसको introduction में use कर लीजिए. No need to think separately. उसी में से आप identify कर लीजिए. So your order of preference should be first think about body, then think about introduction, and then think about conclusion. This is the idea how to do the brainstorming, right? clear so far any question on this and normally is idea ko hum log kahan pe use karte hain essay writing mein do you use this idea in essay writing yes, same idea answer writing mein start kijiye kyunki essay mein hum log kyon use karte hain isko 
बिकॉज ऑफ द सेम रीजन क्योंकि इतना कंटेंट हमें मिल जाता है फिर उसके बाद आंसर इंट्रोडक्शन राइटिंग करते हैं तो बेटर रहता है हमारा इंट्रोडक्शन तो सेम आइडिया वी कैन यूज इन द आंसर राइटिंग ओके सी वो तो फिर देन यू हैव टू बी वेरी श्योर कि वो रिपीट ना हो फर्स्ट एंड इट शुड बी रेलिवेंट मल्टीपल आइडियाज अभी हम शेयर भी करेंगे दैट हाउ टू यू नो जो आप एग्जैक्टली चीजें पूछ रहे हैं यू कैन आस्क मी आफ्टर आई कंप्लीट दिस इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट आई एम श्योर कि आपकी कोरी रिजोल्व हो जाएगी सो दिस इज अबाउट वेन एंड हाउ टू बिन स्ट्रॉन्ग ओके सो आफ्टर बॉडी third is how much should be the length your answers how much should be the length of the introduction three to four lines 10 marker mein kitna 15 marker mein kitna okay so aap 15 marker ke liye theek hai but i will give a very simple idea 10% of the total word limit 15 मार्कर के लिए 250 फिफ्टी वर्ड्स ट्वेंटी फाइव वर्ड्स सो ट्वेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी वर्ड्स कर लीजिए मैक्सिमम 10 टू 12 परसेंट कर लीजिए 30 वर्ड्स मीन्स हाउ मेनी सेंटेंसेस 3 टू 4 सो दैट्स ट्रू फॉर द 15 मार्कर फॉर 10 मार्कर मैक्सिमम टू स्टेटमेंट बिकॉज अदरवाइज यू आर कॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग द बॉडी पार्ट और कंक्लूजन पार्ट और समथिंग एल्स राइट so you have to differentiate between the 10 marker and 15 marker 10% should be the length now 10% is the average length in some cases it can be 5% also suppose aapka koi content acha nahi hai or in some cases it can be 15% also like you are writing and in flow you have to write certain statement but average ki hum baat kar rahe hain that you have to maintain average 10% to 12% this is about the length of the introduction and it's very important to discuss certain points here you know if we see two type of questions 10 markers and 15 markers 150 words 250 words have you ever thought how much is the importance of your each word have you ever thought how much is the importance of your each line or each statement 150 words how many sentences you need to write normally have you counted ek rough idea de dijiye that's the number of words number of sentences kitna hoga i think 80 uh 10 to 12 is the average length of the sentence theek hai so according to that we can say 13 to 16 sentences 250 words mein kitna hoga approximately 22 to 26 sentences i am assuming that you are writing short sentences relevant sentences long uh, not long irrelevant stories okay so based upon that this is the structure now 13 sentences for 10 marks every sentence how many marks approximately 0.8 marks right so one sentence equal to 0.8 marks <coughs> similarly here have you ever thought like that so what is your learning point here you know agar aap upsc mains ka apne score dekha ho agar aapne rank list dekha ho rank 1 to 10 tak to kafi difference hota hai aapas mein 50 marks se bhi ho sakta hai one, between 1 to 2 but after 10 na and especially after 50 on single mark there are multiple rank holders right 
एक ही फिफ्टी फिफ्टी वन फिफ्टी टू सेम ने सेम नंबर ऑफ मार्क्स सपोज वन टू टू फाइव सेम नंबर ऑफ मार्क्स एंड जैसे आप जैसे जैसे आप नीचे जाते हैं ऑन वन मार्क यू फाइंड इवन टेन स्टूडेंट्स सो द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ एवरी सिंगल मार्क इज क्वाइट क्लियरली विजिबल राइट सो If you have point eight marks for every statement, do you have any option to write any irrelevant statement, any statement which is not going to add any value, especially in the introduction part? I see students are just repeating the question statement, or they are repeating something that they are going to write in the body part. Irrelevant, because they think that examiner को समझ समझा रहा हूँ मैं. They think that examiner को आता नहीं ये concept है. They are writing that aspect which is not going to add any value. my invitation is please add value in every statement if you are not adding value please don't write don't write for the sake of writing otherwise you are going wasting your time and you are wasting your marks save your time better agar aapke paas point nahi hai to mat likhiye koi problem nahi hai aapko jahan par aapko aata hai wahan pe acche se likhiyega okay so did you get this point Point eight marks for every statement that you are writing, be it part of introduction, be it part of body, be it part of conclusion. So you have to be very, very selective in your choice of point, in your choice of words, and in your choice of arrangement of the answer. Right? Clear, everyone? Online people, please keep responding. Otherwise, you are just bots for me. मेरे लिए तो आप बोर्ड्स के बराबर हो अगर आप रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं करोगे तो वेरी गुड एंड बाय द वे हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर इन दिल्ली आप ऑनलाइन में से दिल्ली में कितने लोग हैं इफ यू आर इन दिल्ली देन प्लीज कम टू सेंटर यू विल हैव मोर लर्निंग मोर अपॉर्चुनिटी टू लर्न many of you okay now let's see different type of introductions and here also i will discuss how to understand demand of the question right so in every question there are two kind of statement one is context statement second is question statement right so in this question the first statement after judiciary the election commission is seen as an institution of credibility and integrity this is context statement examine the role of eci reasons for its success and the need to preserve the independence of this institution this is the question statement you have to differentiate between two and you have to identify where to focus and please understand the question by reading multiple times minimum two times minimum two times underline the keywords which you are going to elaborate in the answer which you are going to use multiple time in the answer so in this question what are the keywords after judiciary the election commission is seen as an institution of credibility and integrity examine the role of eci reasons for its success and the need to preserve the independence of this institution right so these are few keywords now we will elaborate upon this we will build upon this right so first kind of introduction is context based introduction we can write multiple type of introduction for the same question i am not saying ki single question means only one type of introduction one question might have maybe 10 different type of introduction 10 students writing different introduction that's quite possible but this is only one idea i am using it for an example so don't think ki this is the only way i can write the introduction i am going to present my concept with the help of this example but this same question we can write multiple introduction multiple way of introduction right so context based introduction we will see the overall context the 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 institutions here are judiciary and the election commission so they are the important part of democracy 
and there are four pillars of democracy equity freedom representation and justice out of which representation is taken care by the election commission and justice is taken care by the judiciary right so till here i can complete the introduction after this i might skip not a problem okay so the point which i have given here is not the modal introduction don't think this is the modal introduction this is just a indicative introduction i am discussing the concept with you i am not giving the you know modal because there is no modal everyone will be unique and when you write in the exam condition you don't find the perfect introduction there are imperfect introduction that's okay because we are human beings we are not machines and we have limitation of time we are not writing the content for any test series uske liye to aapko bahut samay milta hai suppose you are a content writer of any institute you get good amount of time aap copy paste bhi kar sakte ho aap but when you are writing the answer it's imperfect that's not a problem it should be relevant that's the main main point okay so first thing is context based introduction the second type of introduction is facts based introduction or data based or information based now this kind of introduction you must be using it's not that i am telling you for the first time aapne pehle bhi use kiya hoga apne answer writing mein but i want to highlight certain words certain points which you should keep in mind to write the powerful introduction first of all the facts as much as possible write comparative facts or trends don't write isolated facts avoid isolated facts Now what does that mean? इसका मतलब क्या हुआ Basically, suppose we see this question. This is the question of mains 2021. To what extent, in your view, the parliament is able to ensure accountability of the executive in India? The question is about executive accountability, right? And about the parliament also. It is the responsibility of the parliament to ensure the accountability, right? So here. we have given the fact the 16th lok sabha question hour has functioned 77% of the scheduled time and rajya sabha 47% okay now this is isolated fact don't use this kind of fact because we don't know ki isse pehle zyada tha ya kam tha okay now second fact 60% of the bills referred to parliamentary committee in 14th lok sabha 71% in 15th and 27% in 16th and just 11% in 17th lok sabha have been referred to the parliamentary committee now this is something which is making some sense because we are able to compare ki abhi kya hai abhi to just 11% hai isse pehle 27 tha usse pehle 71 tha so there is a complete shift from 71% to 11% it means now the parliament is not you know using the parliamentary committee is very powerfully we are comparing i either we should compare inter period or intra period intra period with other country suppose there is a question about growth of india we should compare with china or bangladesh or sri lanka a country le lijiye china jo humse better kar raha hai aur a country le lijiye sri lanka jo humse bad kar raha hai compare with both show both the sides of india so this is very important and trends suppose you are writing the answer about agriculture sector now in the agriculture most of the time you will write ki itni jobs provide karte hain and this is the contribution in gdp yeah write this thing not a problem but write 1947 1991 and 2022 what was the status of employment given by agriculture in these three important timeline 1947 at the name of independence 1991 when there was economic crisis and now at present and then make a observation that how shift in the contribution to gdp is impacting the country is it good or bad 
means your data should be decision based data means the data should be able to used for the decision making because ultimately you are going to be decision maker if i just say this is the contribution this is the employment generation what i'm telling nothing right are you getting this so now you might say ki sir iske liye to bahut data yaad karna padega sir waisa hi yaad nahi hota hai ab aap bol rahe ho ki fir se comparison karo ye karo wo karo yes i am not saying in all the 20 questions you have to write this data out of 20 questions maximum 3 to 4 questions you can use this technique and i think that is quite possible in paper 1 2 3 4 if you just use in 3 to 4 questions each paper that is doable and there are certain areas which keep repeating year after year so in those areas you remember the data don't try to remember for every topic be smart na why are you doing doing it for every topic right play very smart so this is about the facts second so one thing was that what should be the exact quotation second thing is please use the source Sir. yeah No, no. See, uh, and then we can use the graph to show the uh, the uh, lowering of the trend of uh, referring the bill to the parliamentary committee. That will be a better approach. See, don't go with this question. Under try to understand the concept. Concept को समझिए. I am not saying कि इस क्वेश्चन में आप इसी को लिख सकते हैं. मैं तो जस्ट आपको एग्जांपल देने के लिए आपको कर रहा हूँ मैं. You might use your technique. I am not saying this is the. That's why I said कि this is not model answer. this is just to tell you the concept but if you can understand the concept maybe you can apply this in introduction you can apply this in body part that's up to you so next thing is write the source authentic source if you are able to write it's good if not able to write then maybe you can use for example if it's the uh, data of any ngo you can write as per one of the ngo as per one of the international report so be smart try to give the references that helps that helps to build the credibility in the mind of examiner right okay whatever you are typing in the chat box i am not answering right now i will discuss all of that after the class okay uh, i mean after this discussion Okay next is uh, this is another question facts based introduction 2020 question right here i have shown you just to give the idea of report name how to write the report name as suggested by this report as per this report report ke liye you can use economic survey budget you can use any any recent report given by any agency like rbi on financial inclusion bahut sari statements hain right economic survey next is definition based introduction now definition it might look like very basic thing yes it is basic but it is helpful in areas like can you tell in which areas should we use this definition definition kahan pe use kare okay very good technical concept like in this question only cryptocurrency yahan directly puch raha hai what is cryptocurrency so they are asking definition only technical concept that is science and tech mostly okay what else aur kahan pe kar sakte hain use definition ko society yes very good सोसाइटी में स्पेशली इन दो टॉपिक वेयर देर इज एम्बिग्यूटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेक्युलरिज्म इफ यू कैन डिफाइन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियरली इट विल बी गुड और कहां पे कर सकते हैं 
Okay, so there can be many other areas, right? Now, what should be the exact point in the definition? Should we write the word by word? Is that possible? So there are two things possible, two approaches. Either you can write word by word. If you can do that, it's good. But mostly it is very difficult. So you can write the keywords then. If you can't write the word by word definition, suppose we talk about financial inclusion. So in the financial inclusion, you might write the definition given by RBI word by word. But may not be possible. So in that case, suppose you are not able to remember the exact words of the definition, then you can write the keywords. Right? So keywords you can use in the definition writing. OK? Just the keywords will be enough, not a problem. OK? So especially in the technical subjects, social subjects, and in those concepts where there is ambiguity, there are different interpretations possible. You should raise this. You should use this type of concept, right? Definition-based introduction. So you can see year after year, in the science and tech, they are using. They are asking you the definition. What do you understand by nanotechnology? Definitions you can get from policies, like here in the draft national e-commerce policy. Next is current affairs based introduction. Current affairs clearly mentioned volcanic eruptions in 2021, right? So current affairs, you can use it where you can use Economy, OK. Economic issues. Any event, you can use that as a reference. Any government scheme, huh? Yeah, IR, yeah, events, IR, schemes. Yes. So you can use that, okay? That's very simple. Give the reference to the latest aspect. But only and only if you have the exact data or exact point. Don't try to use just for the sake of doing that. Do, this, do that only and only if you have the exact stuff with you, OK? Otherwise, there are a lot, lot many other ideas also which you can use. Next is, again, current affairs based introduction, right? So here also, you can see the question is about desertification, right? So this question they are asking because there was COP14 held just before that question, right? So you can write the theme, right? Then we have constitutional fundamentals or basic introduction. So in this case, I mean, first of all, where can you use this? Mostly in the polity questions, GS2, GS4 questions, right? And again, the same question I'm coming back, which I was discussing in the facts-based introduction, the parliament and the accountability to the executive, OK? So in this case, we are writing the basic concept that executive accountability, executive accountability to the parliament or what is often termed as the parliamentary control over the executive is based upon two concepts. One is the concept of collective responsibility. And second thing is the parliament's control over the budget. So these are the two core aspects of the parliamentary control over the executive. We can mention these things. This is another idea. Similarly here, means 2020 question. And you can see, I am showing you last two years questions. 
2020 and 2021 questions again and again just to show you that we can use these in the latest questions and there is a set pattern which is repeating itself right so here also you can see the question about indian constitution exhibiting the centralizing tendencies to maintain the unity and integrity of the nation right so the question is about the federalism right and the recent issues which are faced in the center state relations okay so here also you can give the basic fundamental that why we needed the federalism why we needed the central uh, centralizing tendency this thing so federalism was needed because we are vast and diverse population right and centralizing tendency is needed to maintain the unity to maintain the integrity yes bit of knowledge yeah in the body part we will need that and ye easy hai news mein tha aaram se ho jata ha lot of news bahut sare news iske bare mein pure lockdown mein yahi to news mein tha ha yes like central government disaster management act it has given lot of power to the state government and lot of time no power to the state government so there was regular tussle ki abhi border band karna hai nahi karna hai supreme court ke paas ja rahe hain so it was a news so it was completely doable epidemic diseases act disaster management and farms act to aapko pata hi hai it was in lot of controversy right the next and the least used is historical evolution based introduction historical evolution right so if you see the uh, syllabus of gs2 gs3 especially and gs1 also you will see there is a evolution of concept suppose we can write about uh, women from ancient to medieval to latest present time similarly civil services democracy any relation any international relation so we can write the historical evolution of the concept so that will show the depth of our understanding we can write the timeline from say uh, suppose we are writing about the land reforms we can write about the land revenue policies of the britishers then after 1947 what exactly was the policy and then what are the latest reforms now this is some something uh, you know uh, which is to be prepared in advance this type of work you cannot do if you don't have any content in advance like this type of work you have to do and you have to prepare in advance so let me share with you this example the mains 2020 question institutional quality is a crucial driver of economic performance in this context suggest the reforms in civil services for strengthening democracy okay basically the question is about reforms in civil services now civil services as, as an institution it was started mostly by the britishers so britishers used this institution to use the meritocracy and to maintain the control over the india through the bureaucracy right so there were certain principles there were certain principles like it has to be merit based it has to be anonymous civil servants ki koi identity nahi hoti in the office they are known from their designation not from their name right they have to work as per the rules so these are the conditions because of which the civil servants they are more uh, the bureaucracy the civil services they are more acceptable to run any country efficiently and this is the purpose why britishers used them but the difference between the britishers bureaucracy and india's bureaucracy kya hai before independence and after independence what is the major difference the police state and mental sorry police state and mental yeah so earlier they were the my my bab in india but now who is my bab the people. the people so people elect their representative and the representatives are governing the bureaucrats but if we compare the attitude of the bureaucrats that's not 
changing in many cases. They are corrupt in many cases. Like they are running the PSUs, they are being kept as the uh, topmost officer of the big PSUs. And they are failing, like Air India. Air India kyo failua? Because long time tak IS officer usko run karata. As compared to other uh, companies being run by the professionals. So economically they are failing. Then behavior wise they are failing. We can see many instances where they are being arrogant. Corruption, you can see abhi kal perso ki baat hai, one of the female IS officers. So a lot of criticism is there. There is no accountability, lack of performance, and there is institutional control over the India's system, right? So we can, you know, this is a long story which I told you. Now you understand the need of the change, the need of the reforms. That on the one hand, we are saying that this bureaucracy is under the control of India's people. But on the other hand, it is exploiting India's people. So there is a mismatch. There is a mismatch, right? So to to bring back to the question, introduction writing. Introduction mein hum kya likhenge? We will discuss about the Britishers agenda and our perspective. We will compare and we will then tell ki now it is a, there is a need of reform in the attitude and the institution of the bureaucracy. So this is how we can write the historical evolution based introduction. So this is only one idea. Similarly, you can write in the local self-government. You can write about the parliament. You can write about any, suppose how to remove poverty, you can write historically kya tha, abhi kya problem hai. Lot many ideas you can use, okay? Any questions so far? Yes. Yeah, 150 word limit we, we must maintain. And it's important, one, because we don't have the extra time. That's the most important part. <laughs> if we exceed, there is no problem. But we will have a problem. The examiner will have no problem. problem yeah. That is number one. Number two, there is a space limit in the UPSC. Like if you know, there is a question come answer booklet, which comes with two pages for 10 marker and three pages for 15 marker. So anyways, you don't have more than two pages. And that's sufficient for 150 marks, but So this story you have to write in the historical evolution, but within the word limit. And that's where you need the practice. It will come with the practice. A lot of students, they join us and they write the answers. And in the first month, they're writing one whole page of introduction. <laughs> Pehla page to introduction mein nikal jata hai because they think unko lagta hai ki examiner ko samajh mein kaise aayega agar main nahi samjhaunga to don't don't do that examiner is smart enough examiner is just looking for keywords okay just keywords are you hitting the keywords yes or no if yes then okay if no then no no marks and i will also tell about keywords how to use keywords what are the keywords different examples I will discuss. But I'll, I'll discuss that tomorrow. Tomorrow we will discuss that, right? Any question online? Any question? Anyone? Online students, can I request you to please come on video, everyone? Now, at least five people I, I need right now on the video. Okay, what are you getting, everyone? Please tell me. Gurjeet is asking, sir, jab hum starting me answer likhna start kare hai, to hume dekh kar likhna chahiye, fir pehle content read karo, fir likho. <laughs> yes, you can do that, not a problem. See, very good question. Very good question because there is a problem in answer writing. 
द प्रॉब्लम इज वी थिंक दैट वी शुड हैव द गुड कंटेंट and after that we will start answer writing now this content journey it is never completed till your means because either you are collecting or after collecting you are just consolidating revising and in upsc mains there are 1000 plus topics only four papers 1 2 3 4 thousand plus topic which you have to prepare very very thoroughly and it's never ending main aapko bata deta hu aapko chahe first attempt chahe sixth attempt hai aapko lagega ki mera content ready nahi hai so don't stop because of the content answer writing is a skill right develop this skill simultaneously don't wait for the content to uh, be better once you have the skill then you can use that skill in any answer right content is just like your you know raw material for the recipe and this is your skill so you can use the raw material any time if you have the skill but this is a journey which is very intertwined you have to collectively work on this and one more thing if you know how to do the answer writing then you can you can revise in a much better way you can read the current affairs in much better way you can consolidate the content in much better way because you know the ultimate climax aapko use kahan pe karna hai and do you know those people who appear in the mains once ek bar mains likhne ke baad you get the clarity ki itna padhna hi nahi tha especially what i see students doing they attend the classes with one institute then they take the notes of second institute then they attend the youtube lecture of third one and this journey is never ending right but actually if you see in the paper suppose we talk about 15 marker so 15 marker mein there are minimum two components and maximum three component two sub question or three sub question now two sub question means for every component how many words you can write out of 250 maximum 80 to 90 words for every sub component are you getting this point 250 words mein you have two sub component so out of 250 words you need 50 to 60 words for the introduction and conclusion so for body part you have only 80 to 90 words each component now how many sentences you can write in both cases 6 to 7 and there is a hidden body part also in the form of way forward you have to write 3 to 4 sentences here also so actually 4 to 5 4 to 5 so how many points you need for every sub component Four to five points. So don't run behind ten points for every subcomponent. <laughs> What is the meaning of subcomponent? For example, you are writing about uh, say self-help group. So issues faced by the self-help group. Just five points enough. Yes, those five points should be very good point. Those should be having some example, some data. Should be different, diverse. But five points are sufficient. just 5 points and what i see aapke paas already 10 points hain aur aap aapke friend koi study material pad raha hai aap uska dekhte ho are ye to point mere ex mein hai hi nahi isko bhi likh lete hain is study material ko wapas se khareed lete hain usko padhna shuru kar dete hain so your journey becomes from content revise revision to content collection wapas se this never ending journey starts okay so gurjeet if you have the shortage of content then first read the content then do the answer writing because even if you have best, very best content and you don't have the answer writing skills then you will struggle in answer writing and that's why the people who are 
having the good ranks you already achhi rank jinki rank aa chuki hai and they want to improve the rank how do they improve they don't improve the content part much they improve the answer writing so content unko aata hai but they are working on the answer writing so and answer writing is a consistent journey and that's why i always say start with one question daily then move to two question daily then move to sectional test and then full length test but here what is most important is feedback and after feedback rewriting the same answer now you might say sir rewriting ki baat kar rahe ho hum to usi ko likh nahi pate ek bar bhi see only if you rewrite the answer you will be able to see the difference between your earlier answer and the new answer and next time you will start with the quality of rewritten answer so after you get the feedback incorporate the feedback and rewrite the answer then you will face new kind of problem discuss this problem with the mentor so this do not need any you know 6 month 1 year journey if you have good mentor <clears throat> you know how much time you need one week for every subject just one month if you are writing regularly and if you are improving regularly if you are working daily feedback mechanism to wherever you join the answer writing or mains test series in your institute do that <coughs> you can take from us also mera matlab hai ki this is most important part because mostly kya hota hai people are writing online likha hai telegram group pe likh rahe hain submit kiye ja rahe hain na to khud ko aata hai na dusre ko aata hai aapas mein hi lage hue hain fir jab means <laughs> please don't take it otherwise you know so after 2 years they realize ki main usse check karwa raha tha jisko khud nahi aata tha right and you know this feedback makes lot of difference or mostly when people they qualify they get the rank after that they don't have any mentor who can support them because unko the rank aa chuki hai unko lagta hai ki ab to usse better kuch ho nahi sakta hai so us samay bhi kuch log hote hain jo unko support karte hain us samay bhi bhi kuch unko feedback us level ki feedback aapko milne chahiye if you get that level of feedback from starting only not only feedback but also how to use that feedback so i can tell you ki aapke introduction mein kami hai aapke body mein kami hai aapke facts mein kami hai aapke point mein kami hai but how to improve because suppose you have four people here so all of the four people will will be having different kind of problem in the same answer so this is a very customized journey customized approach right so coming back to the historical evolution <coughs> in the historical evolution the next part is so basically for historical evolution type of question you can make this kind of comparative charts with you for example parliament working since independence i use this in my classes so we can divide the parliament working since independence in four phases phase 1 till 1967 that was the one party rule 67 to 1990 then 1991 to 2014 and 2014 to now in this four division of uh, phases we can write historical evolution about multiple concept for example opposition the role of opposition right we can write about the role of prime minister we can write about the parliament how the parliament has been working right we can write about criminalization of politics so there is a concept of criminalization of politics and politicization of crime if you know in the polity these two concepts are there criminalization of politics and politicization of crime right so what is the difference between two this thing also we can write in the historical evolution right fine any questions so far i think you might not be getting many thing na no? hmm it's bit thoda advanced hai Uh, answer writing i'm discussing <laughs> yeah
you will get a hint these people had the classes some other class yes vivek you can expect we have multiple programs please fill up this form so that our team can be in touch with you himani is my volume not sufficient Vivek is asking, how do we get the list of topics? Yeah, Vivek, a list of topic I will share on the last day, either tomorrow or the day next. Okay. Okay, Mani. next is need or significance based introduction so in emerging topics for example micro irrigation we can use this kind of introduction so this question is about how to and what extent would india would micro irrigation help in solving india's water crisis so micro irrigation is a new technology now how to introduce this answer we can talk about the problem faced in the absence of micro irrigation the problem faced in the existing system in the flood irrigation so flood irrigation is the existing system the problems in the flood irrigation we can talk about that that is one kind of introduction and this can be used mostly in the new concept for example evergreen evolution renewable energy we can use this and this is the question of mains 2021 similarly mains 2020 there is a question on solar energy again you can see every year similar questions are repeating similar pattern is repeating you can use the same ideas year after year next is quotation based introduction quotation mostly we use in the ethics but we can also use in so social issues we can also use in polity right so this is a question what are the main factors responsible for gender inequality in india discuss the contribution of savitri bai phule this is a question of mains upsc only either 2020 or 2021 out of these two this is a question of one of the year so basically you can give the quotation by any person for example swami vivekanand right similarly here also you can see about women you know how much is the similarity you can see year after year similar almost similar questions they are repeating it was a question on gender inequality and this is the question on women so year after year they are repeating the similar questions so after this i have a assignment for you <laughs> so you have seen multiple type of introduction please write different type of introductions for this question this is the question of mains and i know that you don't have the content that's okay but try this is a very general topic inclusive growth inclusive growth is basically the growth which includes all so in india we have multiple social categories like obc st st women and we have multiple regions south north northeast border regions and we have multiple category of 
economic classes so how to include how to include everyone that's the point okay what is the intergenerational and intra generational issues of equity intergenerational means between now and future between now and past and intergenerational means between one category of person and another category of person so what are the issues so here you can write different type of introduction either you can write current affairs based or historical evolution based any of these kind of thing right there is one more bonus challenge mostly we learn by teaching others so i will request if you can teach this concepts to one of your friend before coming to the next class that is tomorrow then it will be ingrained into your mind this nine different ideas which i have told you if you can share with your friend with proper example don't you think it you will remember it forever so do that ha yeah, sorry okay okay everyone so please tell me the name of person with whom you are going to share that kiske sath mein aap ye karne wale hain it will be an opportunity for your friend also to learn from you and i'm telling you these techniques these are being used by toppers right in my classes there are people who have already qualified the who have already got the rank so these things you will learn after years and years of preparation which i am telling you in the day one ed only right okay kartike very good ankur Bal baladi you will share with ganesh very good okay to find at least one upsc friend and share with them and i don't know what is stopping you people from opening your video ya yeah, din ka time hai abhi to koi problem bhi nahi hai raat ko to samajh mein aata hai ki aap log so rahe ho sakte hain late <laughs> abhi to video open kar sakte hai dekho class okay <laughs> so you you request for the video recording also okay we will provide recording you be in touch with our team we will provide the recording okay and you take the topic list from outside take the topic list from madam ha ha she will give you okay ha 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 we share no no it's going on it's uh, 40 more minutes actually in sab अदर क्लासेस थी इनकी दे हैव अदर शेड्यूल क्लासेस सब्जेक्ट का क्लास इनका ओके सो आई विल नॉट मूव फर्दर इफ आई डोंट हैव एटलीस्ट फाइव पीपल ऑन द वीडियो आउट ऑफ थर्टी टू स्टूडेंट्स I can expect five students, na? So I will not move further. It's up to you whether you want the class to move further or not. so this is the summary of the points that we have discussed so out of this i did not discuss the timeline based approach 
So in the timeline based approach, we need to write the timeline. Okay, suppose we're talking about industry. So what is the timeline of industry? From independence till now, we can do that, okay? Yeah, please, please. Yes. No. No, no, no. Diagrams you must use maximum in uh, fifty percent questions, fifty to sixty percent. That too, in the body part only one part. Means. Ha. Uh -huh. no, not paragraph. Point form. Ha. Okay, uh ha. -huh. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Uh, Complete flow chart नहीं चलेगा. हाँ आपका ऑप्शनल मैथमेटिक्स हाँ मेडिस या 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 आई रिमेम्बर आई हूँ ओके सो टेल मी एवरीवन शुड आई मूव फर्दर और नॉट इफ यू डोंट वांट टू कम ऑन वीडियो देन आई विल प्रोवाइड यू द रिकॉर्डिंग ओके प्लीज सी द रिकॉर्डिंग एंड एंजॉय योर लाइफ डोंट कम ऑन वीडियो आई विल कंटिन्यू द क्लास विदाउट यू पीपल बींग ऑन वीडियो कैन यू हियर मी एवरी Please say yes or no. Am I speaking to the boats or to the hu real human beings? I can't see even a single person on video. Yar, kya ho gaya is session ko? In my classes, at least eighty percent people are always on video, and that gives you the that gives you more concentration, na? It helps you. Uh, thank you, Niharika. Thank you, Himani. Thank you, Gurjeet. Thank you for taking the initiative. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you, Kushbu. So all the girls have taken the initiative. That's very good. Out of five, four are the girls. Very good. Thank you for doing that. there is no network issue from my side okay hi kavya aparna and khushbu i think you are friends am i right hmm i remember Yes Himani you can please fill up the form okay our team is circulating the form please fill up the form we will guide you okay those people who want the personal guidance please fill up the form we will guide you fine now we are going to discuss very important aspect that is a body part body writing you know how much is the weightage of body in the answer writing 80% so in this body there are two aspect one is dimension and second is points so what is the difference between the dimension and point can you please tell can anyone tell what is the difference between points and dimensions dimensions like political cultural social very good gurjeet dimension means linking wide aspect very good vivek 
point different bullet format dimensions impact okay kartike see basically dimensions are the broad categories and points are the points out of the dimension right so for example if i say what are the reasons of unemployment okay let me show you suppose i am i am writing about the air pollution what are the factors what are the factors behind air pollution right so i can divide the factors into two categories climatic factors man made factors then inside each category i can write climatic factors like in the winter season there is temperature inversion in the pre monsoon there is dust storm there are dry hot winds there are thunder storms there are volcanic eruptions man made factors like industrial clusters delhi ncr mein there is crop stubble burning burning of plastics coal municipal waste diwali crackers real estate and personal ignorance so i am dividing the points into broad categories when i divide the points into climatic and man made factors what are the benefits first of all i can recall better i can organize my answer better right i will give you another example like this is about the working of rti you know rti right to information act what are the issues in the working of rti so systematic issues ground level issues and information communication issues okay we can divide into three broad categories systematic issues ground issues and information communication issues these are the three broad categories of right rti working okay similarly suppose i have to discuss about i have to write about drought management you know this kind of diagram you can make you know you can use this ha ha tree based like tree working ha and i will discuss 10 different type of diagrams tomorrow ha so issues in the drought management number 1 lacunas in the planning lacunas in the agriculture and water management means you can divide into broad categories and then elaborate upon that lacunas in the management overall management of drought so now i'll discuss the different type of dimensions i will share with you i will discuss with you the different type of dimensions which you can use for brainstorming for answer writing right basically again i will come to different dimensions so dimensions are basically the broad categories in which you can classify the point so these dimensions you can use for multiple purposes what are the purposes for which you can use the dimensions use of dimensions number 1 writing structured answers number 2 notes making it will help you na suppose you are making the notes from the book 
if you know if you know the dimension you can categorize those point into dimensions third linking with the current affairs fourth it will help you making good diagrams flow charts clear everyone are you getting do you agree if you have good amount of dimensions then it will help you in all of this okay okay kartike balaji very good please participate everyone please participate keep please keep responding everyone okay fourth point fourth point is it helps in uh, you know making the diagrams and flow charts so what are the different type of dimensions what are the various categories of dimensions let's see first is stakeholders approach suppose you are writing the answer on covid management how different stakeholders can manage the covid so you can write about government you can write about media the citizens the global institutions the doctor community the various stakeholders you can think about and you can write their role individually you know this is how you write the good answer on effective covid management so this is your thought process which works here right the role of corporate the role of ngos you know can you write the answer now even if you have not read anything special but you can categorize all your points into these stakeholders next next is pastel approach this is very important please please notice this please take a note pastel approach this is very important i will elaborate this very very in very very detail okay so in the pastel approach p stands for political now in the political what are the various sub dimensions first is political willingness political willingness for example if we are writing the answer on the reasons of poverty in india india mein garibi ke kya karan hain so i can write the lack of political willingness only from the fifth fire plan we started focusing upon the poverty before that we were not focusing on the poverty so first is the political willingness the absence of political willingness second is political ideology socialist capitalist like that okay so in in the starting of our fire plan we started democratic socialism we focused on psus we gave more importance to the psus after 1991 we started focusing on the private sector 1991 ke baad mein private sector open hua tha aapka right so we can see that because of failure of the psu we cannot we could not overcome the poverty in india because the psus they were expected to provide the employment cheaper goods quality goods and infrastructure throughout india psu means uh, public sector undertaking that's a government company yes 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 very good question 
go some time in the flow i i might think that you already know <laughs> hmm so political ideologies then political timeline you can mention about political timeline like till 1967 we had one party rule congress ka zamana tha 1967 se 1990 tak alag zamana tha 1990 se baad mein we had coalition government mandal kamandal politics 2014 se leke ab tak we have one party rule right top down versus bottom up approach because in india we had planning commission that planning commission was making the policies from the top rather than from the bottom right so this is the political approach right second is environmental approach in the environment how do you generate the point environment mein aap kaise generate karenge points ko global versus local suppose we are writing about climate change what are the reasons of climate change so global factors that in western countries there was industrialization prior to eastern countries so the global warming started from there only emission of pollution from the factories in britain and other countries versus local factors local factors may we can talk about india there are pockets where there is more emission of pol uh, pollution right then we can talk about rural versus urban then we can talk about major environmental indicators major environmental indicators kya kya hote hain can you tell what are the major environmental indicators so let me tell you one basic idea uh, major environmental indicators ka basic idea just have your prelim syllabus aapke paas mein prelim syllabus hona chahiye prelim syllabus ko you just think in terms of what data i can write suppose the data on species diversity biodiversity flora and fauna yeah level of pollution air pollution water pollution solid pollution noise pollution yeah quality of various uh, natural things you can talk about say uh, okay let me see the chat box yes very good forest cover very good so this is the way you can generate the answers right then we have social social aspect in the social aspect we have basic necessities basic necessities like health water food we can talk about this right then we have so sorry yeah vulnerable sections vulnerable sections like sc st women poor people ch children senior citizens single mothers transgenders so we can talk about that suppose there is a question what is the impact of covid on indian society can you write what is the impact on basic necessities the impact on basic necessities like food water health what is the impact on transgender impact on women impact on children children's education impact on transgenders impact on uh, migrant laborers we can discuss about those things na so that's the impact of the covid on indian society do we have to write something special no we have to just Wo like weave the things together we have to just make it a structure major social indicators what are the major social indicators huh okay that's the economic indicator yeah very good yeah health status me yeah like health indicators me you are very right life expectancy mortality rate imr mmr ha huh. so all these are the social indicators population growth rate women participation in the jobs so you can see what is the impact upon all of these from the covid i'm just discussing a concept of covid to give you an example 
what is the impact of covid on imr mmr life expectancy okay so we have discussed political approach environmental approach social approach and now we are coming to technology so in technology we have supply versus demand right we have research and development versus mass penetration so for example in india we have very good research in various technologies but we we lack the mass penetration we can talk about yeah even here we can talk about modern versus traditional technology right then comes economic approach in the economic approach major economic indicators so what are the major economic indicators yeah per capita income oh uh, that's social <laughs> literacy rate yeah gdp status ha huh, yeah poverty line yes poverty line employment rate inflation rate interest rate in the economy taxation rate yeah yeah very good so now you have lot of ideas to connect with yeah. Yeah. this is no no whatever i am discussing is right now is not very random this is a research of years and years and normally students who are preparing for long they come to know this approach only after so much time year after years and years of study but if you have this approach in the starting only don't you think your absorption capacity will be much better your thinking power will be much better your uh, notes making will be much better your current affairs will be much better that's why this is very important for the beginners as well sector wise you can divide the economy into agriculture sector industry services sector services sector into banking telecom finance education administration then developed versus developing developed versus developing suppose uh, we are talking about the impact of covid on economy so impact on agriculture impact on industry impact on manufacturing sector impact on it it is doing better after covid manufacturing companies were closed lot of workshop were closed can we say that this sector covid has no that will be very extreme statement actually <laughs> unless we do it at the government level you know it has impacted their per capita income for certain time it has wiped away their savings but to say that it has moved from socialist to capitalist is very extreme statement and that's not true actually <laughs> hmm So actually so <coughs> socialist versus capitalist is the approach through which all the stakeholders uh, uh, you know operate government operate government makes the policies industries operate you know other everyone has to operate from there yeah it has benefited the capitalist more covid has benefited capital because if you see in every sector more you know companies have become big lot of companies have become big at the cost of small companies like amazon has benefited at the cost of small small uh, shop owners rich versus poor yeah 
it has impacted both but more impacted poor people then coming to legislation what is the legislative aspect so first dimension is legislations legislation is basically the law the law means something which is made by the parliament okay very good your participation is very good everyone wonderful so legislations you can write about legislations you can write about constitution of india suppose you are writing the answer on casteism in india how can we overcome casteism in india so you can write about untouchability related laws you can write about the provisions of constitution of india with respect to you know elimination of casteism right you can write about policies by the government to promote education to promote health to promote equality economic opportunities right you can talk about administrative uh, administrative uh, issues administrative support schemes how they are being implemented right yes yeah constitution of india yes like we can talk about article 14 to article 21 fundamental right next is two sides approach right so far we have discussed stakeholders approach and pastel approach next is two sides approach right so what is two sides approach in the two sides approach we have man made versus natural or climatic suppose we are talking about climate change so is it man made or is it natural it's both we can talk about structural versus operational suppose we say how's the functioning of police in india is it structural problem or operational it is both so we can write structural problems and operational problems right then we have institutional versus functional institutional reasons and functional reasons demand side versus supply side modern versus traditional suppose you are writing about education system in india what was the traditional system guru shishya parampara and what is the modern system about online education jahan par log apna face bhi dikhana nahi chahte how much is the difference i am requesting for last one more than one hour but you even don't want to show your face as compared to guru shishya parampara where गुरु एंड शिष्य दे यूज टू लिव टूगेदर फॉर इयर्स एंड इयर्स कितना डिफरेंस आ चुका है आप देखिए एग्जाम्पल लाइव एग्जाम्पल है प्लीज डोंट गेट ऑफेंडेड बट दिस एग्जाम्पल जस्ट केम इंस्टेंटली डोंट गेट ऑफेंडेड बट दिस इज द चेंज विच इज हैपन वी कॉन्ट इवन थिंक पब्लिक वर्सेज प्राइवेट वी कैन टॉक अबाउट हेल्थ सेक्टर पब्लिक हेल्थ एंड प्राइवेट हेल्थ सेक्टर okay so stakeholders approach pastel approach two sides approach then we have different levels different levels okay are you getting everyone so what is your top most learning so far in the last more than one and a half hour what is your top most one learning so far everyone please share different models of answers okay very good vivek 
How to give introduction, Bala? Very good. See, unless you think about your learning, you won't be able to retain that. Sochte rahiye ki kya sikha maine abhi last one hour mein. Pastel approach, very good. Madhukar. Ajit is saying introduction and start, very good. Shruti Lakshmi is saying about dimension writing. Kartike Soni, I I'm making many hues of mistake in learning. I don't know what is the demand of question. Okay, Kartike, you are learning about question demand. Preeti is learning about every point. Okay, very good. Abhishek, pastel approach. Ajit, dimensions. Ayushi Dikshit, pastel approach. Bala, dimension versus point. Very good. Okay, Gurjit, very good. Saurav Kalita, very good. Ayushi, many type of introduction. Shrija Reddy, dimensions, very good, wonderful. I am so happy that you are learning. Very good. But this needs consistent application, okay? And those people who are looking to have the guidance on this, you can fill up the form which we have shared, okay? Any further query, you can fill up the form that we have shared. We will clarify that. Know the importance of thinking, very good. Fit hua ki sochna kaise hai? Okay, very good. Very good, wonderful. Different levels. You can think about individual level, local level, state level, national level, international level. Suppose we talk about climate change or say we talk about food security. How do we bring food security? Individual level, what, what can we do? Local level, what can we do? State level, what can we do? National level, what can we do? International level, what can we do? Okay? And then finally, we can utilize GS syllabus for thinking. That's very, very beautiful. And that's why I say, please remember GS syllabus. GS syllabus ko ratta maal lijiye. Please download the GS syllabus. Have printed in your room. This help. This will help you a lot because GS syllabus will actually clarify what exactly you need to learn, and you can interlink because GS syllabus me pura ka pura aapka syllabus cover ho jata hai. So let me share with you an example. Suppose we we want to write about the reasons of poverty in India. So we can talk about history, historical reasons, Britishers ki wajay se, Mughals ki wajay se, then failure of the government policies. We can think about geography. In certain areas like Northeast, there are geographical problems, right? We can talk about society. In Indian society, we have casteism, which has kept certain people, people poor. Then we can talk about paper two. Paper two mein kya syllabus hai? Governance. So what are the governance issues? The central government is making the policies for those areas which have some local problems. Central government is making the policies, similar policy for all the India. All over India, same policy on ki. But this policy needs to be different. For example, food may. In food, food uh, we have National Food Security Act. So we are distributing same food all over India. We are not differentiating, be differentiating between tribals who need different kind of food. We are not differentiating for children who need different kind of food, more nutritious food. Right? Then problems in IR, foreign, country, foreign relations, border issues with China, border issues with Pakistan. Then paper number three, economy. In economy, agriculture may be a problem hai, because of which people are poor, land reforms are not succeeding. Industry could not create jobs. Service sector is creating jobs only for educated people. We can talk about technology. Technology is good, research is good, but it is not penetrating among the masses. We can talk about internal security because of the problem like Nexalism. Certain pockets are still poor, especially the, the reasons like Central India. 
So you can talk about ethics, ethics in politicians, ethics in NGOs, ethics in corporates. Abhi dekhe to har koi, officers, politicians, everyone is having the lack of ethics. So do you, can we think we can remove the poverty from India? Very, very difficult. So far, we have never thought about elimination of poverty. We have never thought that we will eliminate the poverty. We will just say, we, minimi we will minimize the poverty. So even our thinking has not gone to the elimination of poverty. So this is how we can think from the GS syllabus perspective. Did you get? How can we use the syllabus for thinking about the introduction, uh, about the body writing? Right, everyone? Very good. So GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4, we can use all the dimensions. Next is value additions. In writing good answers, we can use the examples, case studies. What is the difference between example and case study? Very good. Very precise. Impractical also. Case study is something which has happened in the real life, which is a successful story, successful life story. That is case study. Right? For example, Ralegaon Siddhi by Anna Hazare. That is a successful case study of rural development. The, new, the food security in the uh, states like Chhattisgarh, Tamil Nadu, that is a successful case study. But example can be theoretical also. Just to communicate my ideas, I can give you the example, right? I, I can use facts, I can use diagram. How to use facts, I have to use diagram. Tomorrow we will discuss. Kal hum isko discuss karne wale hai, right? Then we have cycles and stages. And again, this is very important, okay? Pre, during, post. For example, with respect to disasters, we can say pre-disaster, during disaster, and post-disaster. Pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID. Right? Virtuous cycle versus vicious cycle. Virtuous cycle of investment. Vicious cycle of poverty. So we can compare the growth of China versus the failure of Sri Lanka. In, 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 Sri Lanka, uh, in, in China, there is a virtuous cycle of export and investment. In uh, Sri Lanka, in Sri Lanka, there is a vicious cycle of inflation and public debt. We can compare two countries, right? Life cycle approach. Suppose we are writing about woman's health. So we can talk about child, we can talk about teenage, adult and old age. Suppose we are talking about child education, sorry, woman's education. So the problem faced by the woman in the child age, at the teenage, in the adulthood, in the old age. The government policies at the child level, for the child, girl child, for the teenage, for the adult and for the old age. We can discuss, we can write about it. Then, when we are writing the answer on policy, we can divide into policy formulation, policy implementation, policy monitoring. Policy formulation. Suppose we are talking about, um, say, any government scheme. So we can say what are the problem in formulation, problem in implementation, problem in monitoring, right? Then we can talk about timeline approach. In timeline, I have discussed short term versus medium term versus long term. Suppose we have to write the solution on how to remove the unemployment from India. Short term, medium term, long term. Fire year planning guest. What, what, what was done in the first plan, ninth plan, and latest plan? Political timeline. Congress ne kya kya, coalition ne kya kya, and latest government kya kar rahi Past, present, and future. Suppose we are talking about manufacturing sector. How is the manufacturing sector doing in last uh, so many years? So this is the overall gist. This is the overall 
uh, idea okay and these notes these summaries i will share in the last day so i think tomorrow or the day next i will discuss i will share these okay